What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for joining me. And today we are continuing off our series where I tell you every single NHL team where they stand for the upcoming NHL 2021-2022 season. Moving along with Pacific Division, I'll be talking about the LA Kings today and I'll give you a rundown of what my expectations are for this upcoming season. All right, so the Los Angeles Kings. Honestly, this is a very intriguing team. Last season, there was next to no expectations for the Kings, and they played a lot better than most people had predicted. Whereas myself, I did kind of expect this. I thought they were going to be somewhat competitive, but still not good enough to make the playoffs, and that was exactly what happened. So here's a rundown on what their stats were like last year. So last season, they finished with a 21-28-7 record for a total of 49 points, finishing 6th in the West Division. They had a 72-point pace over 82 games, so obviously not a very good team. If you look at their offensive numbers, they had a 2.54 goals for per game, which ranked 27th in the National Hockey League, and an 18.9% power play percentage, which ranked 19th in the NHL. So obviously, offense was a clear issue here. Looking at their stats defensively, they didn't fare all that much better with a 3.02 goals against per game, which ranked 21st in the NHL, but a surprisingly good penalty kill. 83.7% penalty kill percentage, which was tied for 6th. I believe they were tied with the New York Islanders. So pretty weird company there for them to be in, but uh, good for them for having a good penalty kill, I guess. So taking a look at their top five scores from last season. In first, we have Anze Kopitar with 13 goals, 37 assists, and 50 points in a full 56-game season. Obviously, we know what Kopitar is. He's a very elite two-way centerman, and he really isn't showing any signs of slowing down. And next, we have Drew Doughty, who had somewhat of a bounce back here with eight goals, 26 assists for 34 points. Now, it's clear that he's not the defenseman he once was, but he's still pretty solid offensively, and he can contribute a little bit of points here and there. Third, we have Dustin Brown, who in 49 games scored 17 goals, which led the team, and 14 assists for 31 points. This is a guy that has been on the decline over the last few years, but he's still putting up decent points. He's playing on the top line with Anze Kopitar. He seems to be doing just fine as of right now. And in fourth, we got Alex Iafalo, who in 55 games scored 13 goals and 17 assists for 30 points. Iafalo is still relatively young, and he had a pretty decent year, all things considered. But yeah, he is playing top line minutes, so he's getting a ton of opportunity. But unfortunately, in the coming years with these young, talented kings coming up, Alex Iafalo might be a guy who will be forced down the lineup very soon. And in fifth, we had Adrian Kempe, who scored 14 goals, 15 assists for 29 points in 56 games. Honestly, Kempe is a pretty decent player. You can move him up and down your lineup. Ideally, you'd have him in a third line center role, but he can obviously play the wing. If you need him in a top six, he's pretty decent in that role as well. And in goal, we got Calvin Peterson, who clearly is the number one goaltender on the Kings as of right now. Jonathan Quick is well past his prime, and he's no longer the Kings' number one netminder. So for Calvin Peterson, he had 35 games played with a 9-18 and 5 record with a 2.89 goals against average and a 9-11 save percentage. Honestly, for a Kings team that was pretty below average, mediocre, I guess you can say, he was actually pretty decent. Like a 9-11 save percentage, not all that bad. He did all right, and he's still pretty young, so there's definitely room to grow there. There's definitely potential for him to be a much better goaltender in the years to come. Now we're going to get into what I believe the LA Kings' expectations are entering this season. But looking at this Kings team, it definitely looks like a team that's moving in the right direction and is going to be a lot more competitive than they were in years past. Looking at what they did this offseason, they added some very solid pieces. Victor Arvidsson, who's a top six winger. And we all know that Arvidsson had a miserable year in Nashville last year. So that's a guy who's definitely destined to be a big candidate to bounce back next season. They also added Philip Deneau from Montreal, who, you know, not going to provide a ton of offense for you, but is a very solid shutdown center. And of course, we know what he did in the playoffs. He was very key to the Montreal Canadiens Stanley Cup final run, shutting down guys like Austin Matthews, all the Jets forwards, Mark Stone, Max Pacioretty. Very key piece here. And then they added Alex Edler, who at this point in his career, not the defenseman he once was, but still a veteran presence, can probably fill in a bottom pair role. Now for their status, I do think they're going to be much more competitive. But seeing that the Pacific Division is pretty weak, I feel like the playoffs might be in reach for the Kings. I don't know. This is a team that's definitely improving, definitely going in the right direction here. I don't know. This Kings team definitely has the makeup to surprise some people this upcoming season, especially with the young guys coming in like a Quentin Byfield or an Alex Turcott, Gabe Velarde looking to take another step. Definitely the biggest dark horse in this Pacific division as potentially a playoff team. Looking at who I predicted will be their top five scorers entering this season. First, obviously, it's got to be Anze Kopitar. So I have him scoring 22 goals, 55 assists for 77 points. Like I said before, Anze Kopitar is still a very elite two-way center. And there's definitely still offense in the tank. 
as we saw last season, leading the Kings in scoring. So barring any sort of decline, I feel like he probably should hover around a point per game. And in second, I got Victor Arvidsson, who I think is going to have a massive bounce back year with his first year with the LA Kings. So I have him leading the team in goals with 29 and also adding 24 assists for 53 points. Especially if he's going to play in a top line situation, playing on the wing with Anze Kopitar. I feel like a guy like Kopitar and his elite playmaking can definitely elevate him. He probably should pile up a ton of goals as a result. In third, I have Drew Doughty scoring 10 goals, 35 assists for 45 points. I still feel Doughty has some offense to give in the tank. Like last year, he's had a pretty good bounce back year. I figured he could probably score about 45 points again. In fourth, I got Dustin Brown, still as solid as ever at his age, 23 goals, 21 assists for 44 points. I figured if he's going to play with Kopitar, he's probably going to put up some decent goal scoring numbers. But regardless, I still feel like he can be a consistent 20 goal, 40 point guy at this point of his career. In fifth, I got Alex Iafalo scoring 18 goals and 24 assists for 42 points. Now, I don't know if there's younger guys who might push him down the lineup, but as long as he is in the top six, he probably still should put up some decent offensive numbers. All right, so now I'm getting into what I believe the expectations are for the LA Kings this season. Like I said before, I think they're going to be much more competitive than they were last season. But ultimately, I think it's still early to say that they're definitively a playoff team. But with that, I have them finishing sixth in the Pacific Division with a 36, 36, and 10 record for a total of 82 points, and that it's not enough to make the playoffs. I'm just not exactly sure where they stand at this point. Like the forwards they have are super young and we don't know what type of impact they'll make on the lineup this upcoming season. And I still have question marks about that defense. Outside of Drew Doughty, there's not really a ton of options there at the moment. And of course in goal, Jonathan Quick passed his prime. Then we got Cal Peterson who's still young and has room to grow, but he's not there yet for me. Now, could they surprise, potentially make the playoffs? It's definitely a possibility, but I certainly don't expect them to make the playoffs this season. But I guess we'll see. That's going to wrap up my season preview on the Los Angeles Kings. It'd be great to hear your thoughts in the comment section and give me your opinions on where you think the Kings stand this season. You have the Kings similar to where I do, a 500 team kind of still finding themselves, but being a little bit more competitive. Do you think they could potentially surprise people and actually make the playoffs in the Pacific Division? Or do you think they'll have a year where they completely tank and they try to go for a number one overall pick? Let me know what you think once again. Thank you so much for watching this video. Click like if you liked it. Please consider subscribing. I hope to see you guys in the next video. See you later.